What's up everyone? Welcome back to ARTV. My name is John. It's time for a review of album number five by the British band Foles. It's titled Everything Not Saved Will Be Lost Part 1. As the title would lead you to believe, yes indeed, this is part one of two. Two studio albums coming out in 2019 from Foles. Sign me up, please. It's been a long wait in between records, but I think a lot of fans are having that scratch just itched big time because they know more music is coming down the pipeline. We were treated to the lead single, Exits, which is once again great for alternative. I see this as being the perfect selection from this record as the lead single, just like they did on Holy Fire with Inhaler, and then What Went Down, the title track being the lead single there. They've kind of been killing it with the lead singles. I don't want to say part one necessarily feels nihilistic in its tone, but they certainly Trojan horsed in some darker, more sad lyrics juxtaposed together with the music that feels mostly more bright and vibrant. The British band are now without their founding member and bassist Walter, but even though this is quite different in many ways from a lot of the past Foles releases, the bass lines here are certainly not weak in the slightest. Part one casts a wide net that is able to cover a good chunk of ground in a short amount of time. There's songs that grapple in heavier, more hard-hitting territory, something akin to their past releases, but what I love about this record is that they're able to change things up because much of this record deals in synth-based music, something that feels more danceable and rhythmic. Lead vocalist and primary lyricist Giannis Philippakis sneaks in these darker themes about a changing world over the course of 10 songs, and the results are seriously fascinating to hear. Everything Not Saved Part 1 was such a complicated back and forth at first. On my initial playthrough, I was captivated but slightly caught off guard at just how different the energy that Foles were throwing out there actually was. Time number two, however, really didn't do that much for me as I played through this record. It's something that perhaps maybe felt too moody, too danceable, too something that I couldn't quite put a finger on, so I put a pin in it and then took a step away for a day. This is when the album sank in and unleashed its full potential for me. The beauty and energy of the first playthrough was still felt, but now I'd started to unpack the deep, well-layered mix along with the sharply timed rhythms. Part 1 is in fact quite the rhythmic experience, dropping up synths, swirling guitar lines or else bass to add unique flair, and occasionally switching up the conventional time structures to keep the listener guessing. Its songs are insightful and approach topics that we've probably already heard a plethora of times already in either new or more melancholic ways, forcing us to face the grim reality of the vacated, loveless world that's out there waiting for us. Part one is only 39 minutes long, but somehow feels even shorter than that just because of how good of a job they do at hooking you on the music. I do feel that Foles certainly changed lanes here, but if you dug Holy Fire as much as I did, and I think as much as most Foles fans did, then think of this as maybe an expansion pack to that record, although it stays true to the original lore and intent of the game, or in this case, the band. And White Onions is a great place to start due to the way that it blends the sound of what went down in Holy Fire remarkably well. The guitars lurk in the mix and then strike boldly with some really spacey off-kilter notes in the second verse before breaking down the wall once the chorus hits. This might just be tops when it comes to the entire band chemistry on part one. The instruments all feel so rich and full, and the drumming here, I've got to give a special shout out to it because it's so impressive. In Degrees follows that up immediately with a tingling synth line that eventually leads to a massive drop into the hook. It's a song about losing someone slowly, aka In Degrees and you might certainly feel that that is going to be a very sad and reflective song about mourning or something else with the loss of a relationship, but I don't feel that it really goes that way or plays out like that because it kind of fakes out the listener, as I alluded to before, with, yes, the darker lyrics, but those kind of get buried with the way that the light is shown in with the danceable feeling of the music. Everyone was buzzing about the track Sunday, which I didn't get a chance to hear until the album dropped in full, and at first I'll admit that I didn't really get it. It's a track where I felt like I was handed multiple puzzle pieces and I didn't know how the fuck I was supposed to fit them together. I cycled through it in back-to-back -back listens once and that's when I started to feel that Sunday it could be more than just a weekend fling, rather a song that I could listen to any day of the week. It's really quite beautiful in a, oh, the world's on fire, so I guess I'm gonna have to accept that and be the change or at least be a part of the change type way. The bridge of the track is borderline maniacal with the sharp swerve into dance rock territory after a more thoughtful indie rock vibe that had been channeled up to that point in time. 
Crazy as it may be, it slams big time and totally works, getting even better once the outro and those prominent backing vocals hit. More shoutouts are in order for the childhood influenced On The Luna, which sounds like it's ready to be played at your next event at a fancy resort, as well as the lead single Exits, which I already mentioned, but to put it plain and simple, it's simply a joy to listen to. Cafe to Athens is a top favorite easily, really luring you in with its decidedly dark marimba loop that's showcased throughout. I suppose trippy might be the appropriate word here to really sum it up. It's certainly a unique sound even within the context of this record. Syrups trips me up every time I play through this album, so I'm gonna end the tracklist breakdown by talking about this one last. It's an immaculate cut with a careful amount of precision and care that was clearly given to it, so tread lightly before you think about dismissing it. It opens with the rolling thump of a cloudy bass line and eventually leaves a lasting impression with the sting of some rather sour, almost autumn sounding guitars. Giannis sounds outstanding in this mix, and the song navigates multiple changes and directions so damn smoothly that you almost forget that you haven't moved on to the next song yet. Well done, Foles. Part 1 was certainly worth the wait. I might not be crazy about the opening track Moonlight or the transitory cut Surf Part 1, but for the most part, this record does an outstanding job at keeping you on the line, wanting more. The record even ends with I'm done with the world and it's done with me, which is a very bleak, somber cut that is led by a loop of piano. But Foles stated that Part 2 is going to open on a very different direction, so I'm already salivating over what that could be. Let me know your thoughts on Part 1 in the comment section down below. As far as my rating goes, I'm giving this a strong 4 out of 5. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for the love of music. If you want to see my review of Foles' What Went Down, then tap here or tap here for another recent alternative review. Other than that, my social media accounts, including my Patreon, can be found linked in the description, and I'll see you soon for more right here on ARTV.